What a timely message through that song, New Wine. You guys, that song is speaking to me more now than ever before. I don't know how those words have entered your ears and your heart this morning, this Sunday morning, right here as we're worshiping together at the river. But I want to share something with you. I heard that song for the first time just a few weeks ago on a, on a meeting that I had with some pastors. Uh, we were heading on to claim jumpers in Fremont. This is before every, all the sheltered um, guidelines were in place. And I remember that song catching my ear, but it didn't really minister to me the way it's doing now. It's interesting that when the crushing gets bigger, the wine gets better. And you know what I'm thinking right now, you guys? I know all across our country, in your own homes, in different cities, we're all facing the same adversity. But I want to let you know, I'm, I want to be as sensitive as I can. I don't want to be insensitive to the different, differing levels of adversity that we're all facing. We're all in the same crisis, the same adversity, but we're all experiencing it in different ways. Some people are experiencing a financial breakdown. Others are experiencing some physical or health issues or relational problems because of the stress and anxiety. I don't know what you're facing, but I will say this, and I want to make sure that I'm not being insensitive to the different levels of anxiety that, and, and adversity that you're facing in your homes, because we're all dealing with this in, in varying levels. But let me, let me impart this message to you guys. There's hope for all of us, because here's the reality that God is speaking to me through that song. The bigger the crushing, the better the wine. And what what better way to start off this new series than with that, the, the, the message of that song. God is working something in you and through you. And at the end of this, at the end of this uh, crisis, we're all going to come out better because of it. But here's what God's speaking to me right now. The attitude we have toward this adversity determines the outcome that we get from it. There will be people that will, that as we face this adversity, this crisis together, that will shrink back more into their fear and others will stretch more towards their faith. So I want to, there's, there's something that God wants to impart to you. I want to start off with this verse that God was speaking to me uh, this week and it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. The Bible says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Did you see that? I want, to, I, want you to, I want to point that to you. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. Right from where you, you are, wherever you are, in the kitchen, in your family room, in your bedroom, wearing your pajamas. Listen. I want you to look at somebody right now and tell them Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Even in this moment, even in all this crisis, there is hope for all of us. Those who believe in Jesus, we know that we have a Savior, a Redeemer, a Deliverer, a Promise Keeper, a Way Maker, a Miracle Worker. I want you to know that God is in control. He is raised. He is seated at the right hand of God. And because of that, we have the power of resurrection flowing in us. Can I get an amen? So listen, I love that. Now, watch what it says in verse 9, and I don't want you to miss this. So it says that he is raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. Now watch this. But the word of God is not chained. Can you say that with me? But the word of of God is not chained. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to get into God's word today. You don't know, that verse speaks so much volumes to me. I want you to know that the word of God is not chained. We may be chained right now. We may feel restricted. I may be chained in my circumstances, but the word of God is not chained. 
You guys, I am so excited. I'm so fired up to get this message off to you because we are starting a new series. You ready for this? The new series that we're starting as of today and will continue on into Easter weekend is this. I'm better because. I'm better because. Now, before I go on any further, I want you to balance this idea in your mind. This thought that's going to kind of be reiterated today. And I want you to, it may not make sense right away, but I want you to balance this idea, this thought in your mind as I continue to preach. And may the Holy Spirit drive this into your heart and mind and let, let it bring revelation and revival to your soul. Here's the thought I want you to think about. I'm better because I'm broken. I'm better because I'm broken. Right where you're at, tap, tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them, I'm better because I'm broken. It may not make sense right now, the storm that you're going through. It may not make sense right now, the, the level of the crushing that's happening in your life. But the bigger the crushing, the better the wine. I'm better. You're going to get better even in your brokenness. I'm better because I'm broken. Some of you guys are probably looking at me right, Pastor, you, you're crazy. I don't feel better. In fact, I feel broken. I feel chained. I get you. I've had better days. In fact, right now, as I'm speaking to you, there's a, there's a handful of people right now. I got Josh in the building, John on the camera. Steph's here. She's, she's waving her hands at me. I got... Polly and, and Jeremy, we're all, in, we're all in this together. And I've, I have invited them to be part of my circle and to just, you know, lift me up because it's awkward for me. I've had better days. You guys, I want you to know, I feed off of your energy. In fact, right now, where you're at, let's interact with this. If you're at home and you're getting this word and you're just, and you're glad to be at the river, uh, even, even if it's celebrating the river of life, worship experience in your home, I want you to type in in the comments right now and just say, Pastor, I got you. Or just give me an amen or give me a high five. Ta put a heart in there. I give you permission right now. Let's just, inter let's just make this really interactive today. I want you to engage with me. Put your hands up. Put your ha praying hands emoticon on there. Put hearts. Shout out amen. I want to see you engage with us online right now. You see, because I've had better days. I get you. We're all in this together. We're all experiencing adversity in different ways. I'm used to feeding off of your energy. I'm used to you laughing at my jokes. Right now, I tell a joke, nobody laughs. And I walk home think, telling Wendy, nobody thought my jokes were funny. I'm, I'm preaching for uh, epic moments sometimes, and I don't, I don't get any amens coming back at me. I'm used to seeing, seeing Fred right there, the third row, with his, yeah. I'm used to June right there in the 18th row, all the way to the back, saying, come on, come on. It's real distinct. He's got that real loud, high-pitched voice. Come on. I'm used to Rochelle right here in the front row with her really contagious, ha-ha. And I, you know what I was thinking the other day? I was telling Wendy, I said, you know what we should do? I should just record all three of them doing the, come on, yeah, and ha-ha, and just replay that over and over again whenever I say something funny or whenever I say something epic, and it will charge me up. You guys, I'm with you. I, I know what it feels like to have things that we're used to, the comfort of our life to be stripped from us. And I've had better days, so I, I get it. So you're probably asking me, what do you mean I'm better because... I'm broken. Pastor, I feel you. You know, but I, I want to believe that I'm better. But right now, I can just focus only I feel broken. I feel chained. Do you feel broken today? Do you feel chained? Maybe you don't feel better right now. Some of you guys feel chained right now to your certain situation. Maybe you're thinking about what Paul said. I may be chained, but the word of God is not chained. I, all I see is chains all around me. I feel chained to my home. I can't leave my house. I can't do anything. Now I can't go to the parks. They shut that down. I feel chained. And some of us are in little tiny homes. Some of us are in only in a, in a room. And we, and we have limited space. And we're getting sick of each other. We're chained to each other. Some of you guys feel chained to your children right now. Okay, don't say amen too loud if your children are in the room. 
But sometimes we feel chained right now. And we just, we need our personal space. Sometimes some of you guys right now are feeling chained to your emotions. Fear and anxiety is creeping in. You, you just feel in bondage to all that stuff. What are you talking about, pastor, that the word of God is not chained? I feel chained right now. I mean, some, some of you guys are feeling chained to your debt. And you feel it, you're feeling the anxiety and the fear creep up because you're chained to that debt. And you're just like, I, don't, I can't see. I have a lack of resources. But here was what I want to tell you right now. Sometimes your lack of resources gives you opportunity to connect back to the source. Because it's in the lacking when God actually tells us, listen, child, you may see the lacking. You may feel the lacking. But it's in your lacking when I need to tell you, you have everything actually that you need. You have everything right now that you need. My grace is sufficient for you. Sometimes it's when I'm lacking. Sometimes it's when I'm broken. Sometimes it's when I feel chained. When I begin to tap into the things of God that are unchained in my life. God can, can tap into your creativity. God can give you greater imagination. God can give you innovation. God can give you bigger faith to grab onto the things of the promises of God. You don't appreciate the promises of God until you have nothing. Because when you have nothing, then you cling on to the one who has everything. And the God of all resource is your source. And when you don't have resource, you tap into the source. And then all of a sudden, you you begin to see that the resources are all around you. You just need to look hard enough. Listen, I have never depended more on God than ever before. I have never tapped into gifts that I didn't think I had until now. You have the resources you need. It looks like you're lacking, but when you have God as your source, you look all around, and he'll begin to point out the things that you have been taking for granted all these years. Gifts, talents, abilities, resources that you never, that you took for granted that's been right there in your life this whole time. People that you begin to appreciate that have strengths that you can leverage, and you have strengths that they can leverage. We begin to lean on each other. We begin to pull together tighter as a team. We begin to learn new things. What are some of the resources that you never tapped into because you never got into a place where you were lacking? I'm better because I'm broken. Why don't you tap, type that right now in the chat. Oh, good. I'll give you a second. Type that right now in the chat. Say, I'm better because I'm broken. I have resources because I'm connected to the source. Do you feel chained? Do you feel broken? I'm better because I'm broken. You're better because you're broken. The brokenness can make you better. You you see, this is what the Lord has been teaching me. Sometimes a chain makes us see the area in our life that is unchained. God's word is never chained. You may not be able to control some of the circumstances in your life. But when you understand that God's word is not chained, now maybe you can't control the circumstances in your life, but you can control the way you react to your circumstances. And when you understand that you have perfect control over the way you respond in this crisis, that you can begin to pray and believe that God has something for you, that the greater the crushing, the greater the wine the better the wine, the bigger the crushing, the better the wine. You see, when you start to shift your paradigm and your attitude about, God, what are you possibly doing in my life because there's such a big storm, such a big adversity, there's such a big crushing, a big pressing, could it be that you're pouring new wine out of me? You're pulling new wine out of me. The bigger the crushing, the better the wine. I may not be able to control my circumstances, but I can control the way I respond to them. You've never been limited by your chains. Can you turn to somebody next to you and tell them, you're not limited by your chains. You're not limited by my chains. I'm not limited by my chains. In fact, I want to share something with you, a thought that God gave me last night. You have chain-breaking DNA in your veins. Yes, you. You have chain-breaking DNA in your veins. Go ahead. Type that in the chat right now. 
Come into agreement with me. Say, I have chain-breaking DNA in my veins. I may be chained, but I have the DNA of chain-breaking abilities in my veins, so the word of God is not chained. Do you believe that? Because I'm going to tell you right now, maybe you don't see it right now, but God is pulling new wine out of you. It's an exciting time. I know that's, in, that's, that's, it's a weird thing to say during a time like this, but it, it is, it can be an exciting time when you realize that God is pulling new wine out of you through the crushing. In fact, that's the title of my message, Chain Breaking DNA. Turn to somebody next to you right now and say, I have chain breaking DNA. Now, I want, to turn, I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 22. There's just a couple of verses I want to share with you this morning. And I believe that we have this chain-breaking DNA because our Savior has the chain-breaking DNA. He has the blood that flows through our veins right now that gives us that ability to understand that I may be limited in resources according to the world standard, to the, the way that other people define me, the, the, the limitations of our world. But I am not a citizen of this world. I am a citizen of heaven. And I can rely and trust in heavenly resources because the one who lives inside of me has given me that chain-breaking DNA. Now, I want you to, we're just going to read six short verses right here in Luke chapter 22. And I want to start us off in verse 39. And the Bible says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, watch this, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now look at, can you just bring me right back to verse 39 for a second? I want, you, I want to point out something to you where it says in verse 39, it says, coming out, he went to, look at this. The Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. You know what the Mount of Olives was? It was a place where the olives were crushed for oil. It was an olive press. The greater the crushing, the better the wine. And Jesus brings his disciples to the Mount of Olives where the crushing would take place. The place of crushing olives. Now, I want, you, I want you to look with me now at verse 40. Because Jesus is about to get crushed. But there's a crushing that's not, it's not just Jesus experiencing this crushing. The disciples are beginning to be stripped from their freedom. They're about to experience persecution. They're about to be tempted. Because they're sensing an anxiety, of, a level of stress in their Savior, Jesus Christ. And they're feeding off of his energy. They're, they're seeing this, this anxiety, that's, this anguish, this deep anguish that's beginning to fill Jesus. And watch what it says. When he came to the place, the Mount of Olives, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. What were they being tempted to do? Probably run in fear. They were being tempted to focus on their chains their new restrictions, the new order. They were being chained to their depression, their fear, their anxiety, all their limitations. Could it be that we're going to lose our leader, Jesus Christ? That's what they were thinking. And Jesus knew the temptation that sets in during crisis. Jesus knew what happens when adversity comes. See, adversity doesn't just make you. It reveals who you are. And so he says, pray, because there is going to come a time where I'm going to be having to be taken up into heaven. There's going to be things that are going to happen tonight and tomorrow and over the next couple of days until I rise again that you're not going to get. There's gonna, it's going to feel restricted. You're going to feel like you're in chains. You're going to see me in chains. You're going to see me placed in bondage inside of a tomb. You're going to see so many restrictions, so much change, so much bondage so much limitation 
And you're going to be tempted to have fear and anxiety. But the word of God is not changed. Somebody say, I'm better because I'm broken. And so he tells them, pray so that you would not slip into temptation. Things were being stripped from them. Let me ask you a question. Just like the disciples, when things were being stripped from them, have you ever been stuck in a situation only to discover the things that you've been taking for granted? Jesus was saying, pray that you would not slip into temptation, but pray that your eyes would be open to, the, to the, what the crushing is about to reveal to you. You're better because you're broken. You're going to come out of this stronger. You're better because you're broken. You're better because your brokenness is leading you to see a better tomorrow. Your brokenness is leading you to cling on to a better Savior. Your brokenness is leading you to cling on to a better deliverer, a better healer, a better promise keeper, a God who is seated at the right hand of God. When we are broken, when we are desperate, when we are in deep anguish, that's a time when we are primed to see the miracle of the moment. You are never primed to see the miracle of the moment until you're clinging on to the hem of Jesus. Have you ever been stuck in a situation only to discover that the things that you've been taken for granted are now being revealed to you? We're better sometimes when we're broken. See, here's what God's been speaking to me all this week. Adversity can make you either bitter or better. Adversity can make you bitter or better. See, adversity doesn't just make who you are. It reveals who you are. It will actually, in the middle of adversity, depending on your attitude as you enter into adversity, let me teach you what successful people do. They look at adversity, they look at the crushing, and they ask this question, okay, it is what it is. We're all facing this. But my attitude is, what can I learn? How can I learn something new? How can I adapt? How can I be flexible? Because it's not just sensitivity to the situation, it's also flexibility. And successful people, children of God, who know how to look at God and have the right attitude and the right posture, can look at any situation in life. They don't just prosper in the good times. Successful children of God know how to prosper even through adversity. Adversity presents opportunity for faith to be activated in your life. And so I want you to know, adversity can make you bitter or it can make you better. Adversity, fear and adversity will cause the people who are, have a tendency or bent towards fear to shrink more into fear. But adversity can take people who are believing God and have attitude and posture directed towards heaven. And they'll stretch to become better by faith. John Maxwell puts it this way. He says, adversity can cause a child of God to stretch from their comfort zone into their capacity zone. You guys, I'm, I'm with you. I've been facing all kinds of challenges lately. I've had to learn so much new things. But instead of shrinking in fear, I'm stretching towards my faith. I'm stretching to new thresholds. I'm just starting to think outside of the box. Just within the last couple of weeks, I've, done, I've learned at least 10 new things with technology. I'm running Zoom meetings now and things that I've never done before, I'm starting to do. I'm, I'm in camera all the time. I'm in front of people. In fact, our church stepped up. You heard me say uh, last week, we've stepped up to feeding close to 200. Now we're stepping it up this week, 250 families right here in Silicon Valley. Somebody came up to me the other day and said, Pastor, all the messages that you're broadcasting through YouTube, can I put that on the radio? There's stuff that's happening all around me right now. And I'm, I, gifts that I never thought I had are now being activated because of the crushing. What is God trying to activate in you? What, how can you be more creative? How can you open up your spiritual eyes and say, God, the greater the crushing, the greater the wine. The bigger the crushing, the better the wine. We're better because we're broken. Now look what it says in verse 41. The Bible says, and as he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, 
he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours be done. Not my will be done, but yours be done. When you see that word cup, that's the cup of suffering that Jesus had to face. What was the suffering? It was him having to take the sin of you and me upon himself to absorb it so that he could nail it to the cross. Jesus is holiness. Jesus is purity. Jesus is love. He is so far from wickedness as the east is from the west. So, so for him to absorb our sin, that he would nail it, on, nail it to the cross, was something unbearable for him. Now, what was the will? What was the will? When it says, not your will be done, not, no, not my will be done, but yours be done, my Father in heaven. What was the will? You know what the will was? That no matter what, Jesus said, Father, it's your will that I become the Savior of the world. But before he could be the Savior of the world, he had to be crushed and bruised for our iniquities. Death always precedes a a resurrection. He had to be bruised for our our iniquities. But because he was bruised, because he was crushed, his Father in heaven would pull new wine out of his son, new grace. We're better because we're broken. Jesus became better for us because he was broken. Now, I want you to turn with me real quickly to verse 43 and 44. We're going to end our reading there. And there's something that God has been stirring in my heart. I can't wait to share this with you. I've seen it for the first time ever. I've read through this passage so many times, you guys, and God revealed something fresh through this scripture. Look what verse 43 says. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Watch this. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood. Did you see that? His sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Now, I know you guys have read that scripture many times before. But there's something God spoke to me for the first time this week. You know, modern science, medical technology has proven that that is actually uh, a medical occurrence. That actually is scientifically proven that it can happen today in, in, in many of us. You see, what happened was this was a scientific evidence that Jesus was suffering great anguish. What modern science and medical technology has proven, that there's these blood vessels surrounding our sweat glands in our, in our forehead, that when it comes time to experience great stress, anxiety, deep anguish, what they found microscopically, they could see that the, that the, um, the blood vessels surrounding the sweat glands would rupture due to the deep anguish, and would mix with the sweat, and then the blood would pour out from our pores. That's what happened with Jesus. Jesus got crushed, but it revealed new wine. You know what the new wine was? At one point in time, we were religious people. We had to We had to worship God through the blood of animals. The new wine that was being poured out, which was better than the Old Testament covenant, was now we had a Savior, the the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. At one point in time, they had to sacrifice bulls and rams and goats, and that was the blood of the animals. But it was incomplete to wash us as white as snow, so they would have to repeat that process almost every day, every year, would be a day of atonement. But today, we have a greater atonement that comes from the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, when he was being crushed for our iniquity, was pouring out blood, which would be grace for all of us. It's the new covenant. But there's something I want to share with you that you see, that's already good in itself, but God revealed something to me this week that I want to, I want to point out to you that I never saw this, and for this week was the first time. Listen, it's about to get exciting in your house. It's about to get exciting in your, in your home. I want you to tell somebody next to you and say, I'm, I'm blessed because I'm broken. I'm better because I'm broken. 
Watch this. You know what? I was imagining this when Jesus, the Bible says drops of blood fell to the ground. Did you see that? Drops of blood fell to the ground. And this is what I imagine in my mind. Jesus was leaning over some structure. And because he was in deep anguish, he was leaning over like this and just praying to his father saying, Father, if it would be your will, take this cup of suffering from me. But not my will be done, but yours be done. And Jesus, taking deep breaths, heaving as much oxygen as he could in his lungs, experiencing the weight of the world upon his shoulder, the blood began to drip. And here's what I saw. Drops of blood fell to the ground. And this is what God revealed to me, you guys. See, we always think about the first shedding of blood. This is what I always thought. The first shedding of blood was at Calvary, the cross. But you know what God revealed to me this week? The first shedding of blood was right here in Gethsemane. It was right here in the garden of Gethsemane. We always think that the shedding of the blood was on the cross, but Jesus was already shedding blood right now, right here in this place. Now, here's what I want to share with you. You know what Jesus saw? This is what I imagine. He's looking down. And imagine this with me. He's looking down at the ground. He's praying in deep anguish, and drops of blood begin to fall to the ground, and Jesus pauses for a moment, and he looks at the blood that's on the ground, and he says, wait a minute. I see what this is. You know what Jesus saw right that very moment in time? He saw a preview to the victory that was about to be on the cross. You know what Jesus saw? Because that blood that he saw on the ground was the same blood that was going to be shed at Calvary. What Jesus saw was a preview of the redemption. What Jesus saw was a preview, a reminder of God telling him, do you see that blood that's on the ground? It's the same DNA of the blood that you're going to shed at Calvary. Do you see, son, that blood that's on the ground? That's me reminding you. Because I, I imagine Jesus looking at that, that DNA, that chain-breaking DNA, and he says, God, my father, I'm thankful that you reminded me that I am the redeemer. That blood was a reminder to Jesus when he saw it. He says, I'm better because I'm being broken. I am the redeemer. I am the savior. I am the deliverer. I am the healer of the world. He saw his own chain-breaking DNA, and it took a crushing to reveal that DNA to Jesus himself. And we, when he saw it, the Bible says, listen, I want you to look at me right now in the camera. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm better because I'm broken. Because I, you have that same spiritual DNA, that, that chain-breaking DNA flowing through your veins right this moment. And Jesus, I imagine, watch what it says here in verse 45. It says, then he rose from prayer. You know what I imagine Jesus is doing? Down on his knee like this, looking at his DNA. And when he saw the blood on the ground, Jesus looked at that and said, I am the redeemer of the world. The enemy did everything to do to crush his spirit. But all the enemy did through the crushing was pull out new wine. And Jesus looked at his blood and he says, that's my DNA. I have chain breaking DNA in my blood. And he, when he saw that, the Bible says he rose. And this is what I imagine Jesus saying. As he rose, he got up to his feet. I am the savior of the world. I am the son of God. I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I am the God of salvation. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am your healer. I know that you, you feel lost, but I am your redeemer. I know that you're stuck in a difficult situation, but I am your deliverer. I know you're scared of COVID-19 and every virus, cancer, diabetes, and whatever you're going through right now, but I am your healer. I, I know that you're stuck in your finances. You're chained to your finances and your debt, but the word of God is not chained. I am your provider. I 
I am Jehovah Rapha. I am, I am your Jehovah Jireh. I am everything you need me to be. You may be lacking in your resources, but look in your heart. Look in your blood. You have the same spiritual DNA, that chain-breaking DNA, and you are not limited by your circumstance. It's time for you to rise up from wherever you are, just like Jesus got up and said, I am still the Savior of the world, and that's who's living inside of you. We have that chain-breaking DNA inside all of us. Now, you know what? I feel like there's somebody that needs to get up wherever you're at right now and make a declaration this morning right in your homes. I feel like you need to grab the hand of your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, your friend, your cousin, whoever is right there in your house. And I feel like you need, could you just do this with me right now? We'll just take a moment, grab that hand right now and raise it up in the, in the air and, t- and tell God right now as you worship him and saying, God, I have chain-breaking DNA. I am not limited by my circumstances. I will respond with faith and power, and I will let this circumstance activate faith to operate in my life. Somebody needs to get back up right in there with your family, with your loved ones, right next to you. Or if you're alone right now, you just need to get up, put your hands, and point to the sky and say, I have chain-breaking DNA. Why don't you type that right now, wherever you're at. Go ahead, take a moment, type it right there in the Facebook live stream video. Or if you're on YouTube, type that in right in the chat. Say, I have chain-breaking DNA. And as you type that, I want you to believe with me that God is working in your very situation and that your eyes will be open to say, in this crushing moment, in this pressing moment, God, you're producing better wine in me. I will get up and I will be better than yesterday. And today, in the future, I will be better as I come out of this because my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory and the anointing and the power will flow through my life into other people in the mighty name of Jesus. You have chain breaking DNA. He rose and you can rise out of this situation and shine his light in your darkest moment. You know, there's something that God revealed to me. One more thing I want to share with you. You know, when you look at D- DNA microscopically, you know what DNA looks like? It looks like a chain. How fitting is that? And in your blood, you w- before you came to Christ, your DNA was chained to sin. Your old nature was chained to your past. Your old nature was chained to depression, chained to anxiety, chained to looking down at yourself, chained to all kinds of limitations, chained to your labels, chained to what, you know, what, what this world throws at you, chained to broken hurts and past, chained to toxic relationships. But your new nature comes from the one that you can invite in your life today. If you'll invite Christ in your life, that chain-breaking DNA will shatter everything in your past, will shatter anything, anything that's chaining you to you right now. Whatever circumstance you're in, you're not locked in it. You still have a voice. You still have prayer. You still have power. You still have faith. And you still have a future and hope in Jesus Christ. This too shall pass. And God has eternity for you already set in his mind. He's already prepared a way. You have chain breaking DNA. And watch this. Whatever DNA that you have in your past, invite Christ in your life, and he will begin to give you a brand new start. He'll break every chain in your past and set you free. I'm reminded by that scripture. Whatever I loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. You have freedom today. Don't focus on your limitations. Focus on an unlimited God. You're better because you're broken. God is pulling new wine out of you. And God is revealing you the chain-breaking DNA that you have in your life. Listen, church. 
friends and family right there in front of your very home. I want to invite the Holy Spirit to into your heart right now. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know what, Pastor? I don't have a relationship with Jesus. And frankly, quite honestly, I feel chained right now. Not just to this current crisis, but I'm chained to my past. I'm chained to my failures. I'm chained to my inability to get to heaven because the Bible says you cannot enter heaven until you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you admit the things that you're chained to today, the areas of bondage that you have to your old, to this old nature, this sinful nature, because you can't shatter the sinful nature. Christ shattered it for you. He became better because he was broken for our iniquities. And the only way you can become better is you realize <laughs> your brokenness. You realize how much you fall short of God's glory. So from wherever you're at, where you're worshiping in your home, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you. And I just need you to repeat after me this prayer. And after you pray this prayer, if, you, if you'll repeat after me and you'll believe in, with all your heart, because the Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If you believe this prayer with all your heart and you repeat after me, you'll be a child of God. So right from where, where you're at, you can get down on your knees. You can just sit down. You can fold your hands with your family. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat, uh, re repeat this prayer of salvation after me. Go ahead and close your eyes from wherever, wherever you're at. Bow on your heads and receive this prayer in your heart. And, and just repeat the words that are about to be uttered here in your house this morning. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I admit that I am broken. I fall short of your glory. For all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And without you, there's no way I can make it into heaven. For your word says, the wages of sin is death. But the good news is, the gift of a God is through Christ. And that is eternal life. Lord, I believe in you that you died for me and you rose again. I believe you're the savior of the world. And today, I ask that you forgive me for my sin and my unrighteousness. I now believe by faith and I receive you as my Lord, my savior, and my God. And now, I, re I receive the gift of eternal salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for making me now a part of your family. Teach me now to live according to your ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, child of God, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God and as part of his holy family. What, do you, what, 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 did, what are you supposed to do next? Find a Bible teaching church. If you don't have one, we would love for you to be part of the River family. Visit us at explorethereriver.church for more information. Here's what I want you to do before I let you go. Would you please leave a comment below in the comment section. If you're live streaming with us on Facebook, leave a comment there. Just say, Pastor, I received Christ today. Put a heart, folding hands, praying hands. Because what we want to do is we want to reach out to you. And we want to help you take a next step in your spiritual journey with Jesus. We're going to direct your steps. If you want more information, you can also direct messages right here um, through our Facebook of, of the river. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment in the, in the chat section below, and we'll make sure to get back to you. We want to get you connected. We want you to continue growing. You are better because today you admitted, I'm broken. But because you admitted you're broken, now you have a Savior operating on your behalf. What great news that is. Would you just rejoice with me? Go ahead and put a shout out or amen in the comments. We're so glad that you're a part of us this morning. We love you so much. And please leave a comment and we're going to get connected to you real soon. We love you. Have an awesome day with your families and, and get some sun, get some vitamin D and con continue to connect with us at the river. We love you in Jesus name. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us. 
If you'd like to donate to this ministry or would like to visit our website to learn more about what's happening online at the river, please visit explorertheriver.church. Thank you so much and have a great day.